Hi, this is Andrew from Nature's Image Photography and welcome to the third in my Photography School series of videos taking a step-by-step -step approach to teaching you how to shoot in manual mode. In my first video in this series I explained the value of being able to control your exposure instead of letting the camera do it for you. In the second video I introduced the exposure triangle and explained how the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO all affect the exposure in different ways. In the next few videos I'll be looking at each one of those settings in more detail, but first I have one more important feature to introduce and it's what I call the light meter. Now before we get started I'll invite you to subscribe to this channel so you can stay in touch with future videos as they come online. So on to the light meter and chances are you're already searching through your manual for the term light meter. So I should tell you that depending on the brand on your camera it might be called something else like the exposure meter or the EV bar. But light meter is what I've always called it so that's what I'll be using in these videos. And by the way the light meter also comes into play when shooting in aperture priority and shutter priority. But it does it in a very different way. Because this series is all about manual mode what I'm going to be looking at is how to use the light meter when shooting in manual. So first of all, what does a light meter look like and where do we find it? On most DSLR and mirrorless DSLR cameras it looks something like this. A little graph with a plus at one end, a minus at the other end and a pronounced centre point. You should be able to see it on the info screen on the back of your camera. But note that some new model cameras give you a few different info screen options. You may have to enable the right info screen to see your light meter. Now they all look a little different but to give you some sort of reference here it is on the back of a Canon, here's one on the back of a Nikon and here it is in all its Technicolor glory on the back of a Pentax DSLR. You should also be able to see the light meter when you look through the viewfinder of a DSLR camera. In fact it should be easier to find because this view only shows you the light meter and a few essential settings. You can see here pretty much what I see when I line up a photo. First we have the shutter speed, in this case a 500th of a second, the aperture which was f4.5, then you see the light meter and finally the ISO which was set to 200. And for the record those are the settings I used when I took this photo. Ok so now you know what the light meter looks like and where to find it, but what does it actually do? If you recall from our last video when I introduced shutter speed, aperture and ISO, I told you that each setting affects the exposure when you take a photo. You can increase the exposure with a slower shutter speed, a wider aperture or a higher ISO. You can decrease the exposure with a faster shutter speed, a smaller aperture or a lower ISO. The trick is to find a suitable combination of settings to get a correctly exposed photo. But how do we tell if our exposure is going to be under, over or correctly exposed? Well that's where the light meter comes in. The light meter is basically an indicator or a guide to how much light is coming into the camera based on the settings you choose. The plus stands for overexposed, the minus stands for underexposed and the centre indicates a correct exposure. As you change your settings, i.e. the shutter speed, the aperture or the ISO, an indicator on the light meter moves up and down. If it moves towards the plus, that's the camera warning you that you're letting in too much light and your photo is going to be overexposed. The further you get from the middle the more overexposed it becomes. If it moves towards the minus your photo is going to be underexposed. The further you go the darker things get. And of course when you hit the centre that's the camera telling you your exposure is perfect. So right away you can see that the light meter takes all the guesswork out of shooting in manual. You can try out a variety of different shutter speed, aperture and ISO settings and as long as you can find a combination that returns the light meter to the middle you can expect to have a properly exposed photograph. Let's see how that works with a little hypothetical. Your light meter is telling you that you have your settings right for a correct exposure. But for reasons we'll be exploring in future videos, you might decide you want to shoot at a faster shutter speed. That means less light coming into the camera, so your light meter is going to drop towards the minus and that warns you that your photo is going to be underexposed. That doesn't have to be a problem, because you can now change your aperture setting, using the light meter as your guide, to bring you back to the correct exposure. What this means is that you can work with a whole variety of different settings for different types of photos, knowing that you can still get a well exposed image as long as you use the light meter to guide you to find the right combination. Ok so now you can see how easy it is to get a well exposed photo in manual, but you can get a well exposed photo in auto too. What's the advantage of using the light meter and doing it yourself in manual mode? 
Well, the light meter only tells you what the camera thinks is a correctly exposed photo. Basically, it's the camera's best guess. But the camera doesn't always get it right. Remember back to my first video where I showed you that if your subject is much brighter than the background, the camera can be tricked into letting in extra light to brighten up the background that ends up overexposing the subject. So for a shot like this, if I shot it on auto, I would very likely end up with an overexposed pelican. And because in auto, the camera has control over the exposure, I'd pretty much be stuck with that. If I shot it in manual, with my light meter in the middle, the result would be the same. But in manual, I'm in charge of the exposure, and if I want to take a darker photo, I can. This is where it pays to be smarter than the camera. One of the great things about digital cameras is that you get to see your results immediately. So if I take an overexposed photo, I know it right away. And because I'm shooting in manual, I have total control of the exposure. Just like the Pelican, this photo is overexposed because the camera was fooled by the dark background and let in too much light. So even though the light meter is in the middle, the photo is effectively overexposed. Now in manual, I control the exposure. So all I have to do is change my settings, most likely with a faster shutter speed, to make the next shot darker. Yes, my light meter tells me the shot's underexposed, and yes, my background is now quite dark, but you can see I have a much better shot of the flower, which is clearly the most important part of this photo. Now that's okay for something like a flower, where I have all the time in the world to play around with my settings. But what about a photo like this one, where the timing's more critical? Well, that's easy. I simply take a few shots of pelicans sitting around doing nothing to get my settings worked out in advance. So when the big moment comes, my shutter speed, aperture and ISO are already worked out. All I have to do now is focus and shoot. So this is what I mean about being smarter than the camera. Your light meter is an excellent guide, and to be honest, once you switch to manual, you'll get nowhere without it. But it is just a guide, and all it tells you is what the camera thinks will be the right exposure. Usually, the camera gets things pretty right, so shooting with your light meter in the middle gives you a good exposure most of the time. But in all those situations where the light gets a bit more difficult, then what the light meter tells you might just be the starting point. From there, it's up to you as the photographer to fine-tune the exposure to bring home a perfectly exposed photo. It takes a bit of practice, but it's worth the effort to know that you, not the camera, are in charge of how your photos are going to look. This brings us to the end of my introduction to the light meter. If you didn't know about it before, you can consider it your new best friend in manual photography. In the next few videos, I'm going to take a more detailed look at those all-important camera settings. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button to see all the new videos as they come online. I'm Andrew Goodall from Nature's Image Photography. Thanks for watching.